This is a Sutotal production. Hello surveyors, uh, this is going to be our third practice video for chapter two. Um, and in this one we're going to be utilizing, um, we, we will be using the molar mass from the previous video. Uh, but also we're going to look at kind of ratios, like how many atoms are in, are in our molecular formulas or in our formula units. But we're also going to be using Avogadro's number here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, right? And so that number, anytime you have a mole of anything, that's how many of those things you have, that specific number, okay? So that's when earlier in the last video when I said, hey, you know how a dozen is always 12? Well, Avogadro's number is always that number, right? A mole of anything is always that number, okay? Um, so here it says, how many carbon atoms are in 7.05 moles of C4H10? All right, so here's what we're looking at. 7.05 moles of C4H10. All right, big deal. The big deal here. All right, if I'm going to use Avogadro's number, I can first figure out how many molecules of this C4H10 I have based off this mole amount. So I know that I've got, well, there's a couple of things I could actually do here. Let's just figure out how many molecules we have first. All right, so I can use Avogadro's number, right? Because one mole of C4H10, right, is that many molecules of it. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. All right, so that cancels out my moles. Now, I can keep going because I don't want the, it doesn't want the number of molecules, it wants the number of carbon atoms. So one molecule has four carbon atoms in it, right? So we can use that idea, right? One molecule of C4H10, right? It has four carbon atoms. So, right? we could see this happening. So what am I going to be doing? I'm going to say 7.05 times Avogadro's number times 4, and that'll give me the number of carbon atoms. So let's look at what we got here. 7.05 times 6.022 EE to the 23 times 4. Enter. Ooh, I have a lot. 1 .6, well, I'm going to say 1.70 times 10 to the 25. 1.70 times 10 to the 25 carbon atoms. All right, so there's that answer. All right, next up, it says how many fluoride ions are in 1.54 moles of magnesium fluoride? Well, it's the same kind of idea here, right? We can figure out how many, how many, uh, how many uh, formula units of of magnesium fluoride are in that mole amount and then we also see that there's two of these ions for every one formula unit so we're kind of using the same idea again so let's start with the 1.54 moles of MGF2 all right and so we're gonna say all right well we got Avogadro's number times 10 to the 23 I'm gonna put it form units all right, that's going to be in one mole of MGF2. All right, so that allows mole to cancel. And then we know that there are two fluoride ions for every one unit. So we're going to say one MGF2 formula unit has two fluoride ions. All right, so the formula units cancel. So I'm looking at 1.54 times a 6.022 times 10 to 23 times 2. So 1.54 times 6.022 second EE to the 23 times 2. And that gives me, I'm going to say 1.85, yeah. 1.85 times 10 to the 24. fluoride ions. Y'all, I just realized something. I put the wrong, that's not supposed to be to the 24th, that's supposed to be to the 25th. 
Yeah, see, there's the calculation. I put the wrong number. It's supposed to be 25. All right. I knew something was off when those numbers were so close to one another. I'm like, that don't make no sense. All right. Next up, it wants to know how many formula units of BASO4 are in 0 0.078 moles. All right. So this one's not too bad because this would just be if I have 0 0.078 moles of BASO4, all right. I know that, all right, well, one mole of anything would have that many formula units of BASO4. So I'm going with 6.022 of a God Rose number again. Formula units. All right, so that allows the mole to cancel. So in this case, I'm just saying 0 0.078 times 6.022. 0 0.078 times 6.022 second EE to the 23 what does that give me? it gives me 4.6971 times 10 to the 22 so that would be 4. Point, I'm going to say 70 because that way it rounds times 10 to the 22 formula units okay let me put a box around my answer so that, because it's going to, it looks like it's going to start getting cramped. All right. All right. Next up, it says, how many oxygen atoms are in 2.5 moles of HCOOH? Okay, so this is the mole of that whole molecule. So we're going to have to do what we kind of did in the first question. So I'll need to take the 2.5 moles of HCOOH, right? Multiply it by the Avogadro's conversion. So we know one mole of CHOOH, right, um, is going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And then we also know, based off this formula here, how many oxygen atoms are in one molecule? two of them, right? So there's two oxygen atoms in one molecule, right? So that will allow molecules to cancel. That will allow moles of CHOOH to cancel. So I'm looking at 2.5. Let me, so 2.5 times 6.022 second EE to the 23 times 2 what does that give me? 3.01 times 10 to the 24 right and that would be oxygen atoms so I'm going to put O atoms alright there we go alright number 5 how many molecules all right, so this one's kind of straightforward. How many molecules uh, are in 0.65 moles of CH3CH3? All right, so if we have 0 0.65 moles of CH3CH3, all right, we know that we can just use Avogadro's number for that. So we know that one mole would have Avogadro's number in molecules. All right, so I'm just saying 0.65 times Avogadro's times 6.022 second EE to the 23, enter, and that would give me 3.91 times 10 to the 23 molecules of CH3, CH3. Oops, sorry, I'm on the edge of my paper, so it got misaligned. There we go. All right, and there's our answer. Now, um, 6 through 10 are going to be a little easier um, because this is really just looking at the relationship. So, like, number 6 says, how many hydrogen atoms are in 47 molecules of this? So, we know the ratio and we know how many molecules. So, we know there's 4 uh, carbon atoms per molecule, but we also know there's 10 hydrogen atoms per molecule. So, if we have 47 molecules of C4H10, right? We can use that ratio. One molecule 
has how many hydrogen atoms in it? 10. has 10 H atoms. So we're really just saying 47 times 10. Right? So that would be 470 H atoms. Right. Number seven says if how many magnesium ions are in seven times ten to the fifteen formula units of magnesium fluoride. So that's a formula unit, right? And we know that there, there's one magnesium ion for, for one formula unit. So really it's just one times one, right? So it would be seven times ten to the fifteen formula units times one magnesium ion right for one formula unit so it would just be 7 times 10 to the 15 like so alright number 8 says how many oxygen atoms are in 5487 formula units of BASO4 so there's our formula unit right one formula unit of barium sulfate has four oxygen atoms in it. So with 5,487 formula units of barium sulfate, right, we know that there are four oxygen atoms in one formula unit, right, like so. So the formula unit cancels, and so we're really just saying 5,487 times 4. So let me do that real quick. 5,487 times 4. And that gets us 21,948. Like so. All right, here it says how many moles of hydrogen are in 0.985 moles of CHOOH? Well, it's kind of the same thing here, right? One mole of this, right, since one molecule has two hydrogens, one mole of this would have two moles of hydrogen. So really, if we say we have 0.985 moles of CHOOH, we know that this tells us we have two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of CHOOH. So the mole of CHOOH cancels and it's just two times 0 0.985 which would be 1.97. All right, and then lastly, how many moles of hydrogen are in 1.3 moles of CH3CH3? Well, aren't there six hydrogens, six hydrogen atoms in one molecule? Well, then it's like saying there's six moles of hydrogen in one mole of this of this compound. So 1.3 moles of CH3CH3, right, means that if we have six moles of hydrogen in one mole of this entire formula, right? So it's just 6 times the 1.3, which would be 6 times 1.3, 7.8. So we should have 7.8 moles of hydrogen. All right. So hopefully uh, this practice video kind of helps with all the relationships that we see, especially when we talk about the atom to molecule relationship the moles of the compound to moles of atoms, and then bringing in actually counting, counting the number of atoms from moles, counting the number of molecules from moles, the number of formula units, all that good stuff. So there's a lot of relationships you want to be comfortable with. Okay. All right. Well, until next time, stay weird. Adios.